get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, now Travis Lee, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, we have Travis Lee, who co-founded 3D Mail Results with his dad, Keith Lee, in 2007. 3D Mail has helped over 10,000 business owners increase the response and profit using direct mail. They help direct mail marketers increase their return using clutter-busting 3D mail products and grabbers. I'm actually one of their customers. You can see this right here. If you can see, if you're watching the video, um, we'll talk about that and some other successful campaigns that Travis recommends. Um, They have a selection of over 600,000 promotional products you can use to make sure customers or prospects never forget about you. Travis, thanks for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me today. I'm uh, excited to be on with you guys. You know, Travis, I go to your site just for inspiration, you know, and I, I encourage anyone going to the site, you know, 3dmailresults.com, um, and then there's a products tab there, and it's phenomenal stuff. And it'll just get your creative juices flowing. Um, I want to first talk about some of the big res- direct response markers. There's many big direct res- response markers that have worked with you guys. Um, I was reading Dan Kennedy, Bill Glazer, Frank Kern, Alex Mendozian. Um, how's Bill Glazer? Talk about some of their campaigns and what worked for them. Yeah, well, it's uh, we've worked with Bill. Really, it's kind of an interest. It's a great place to start because without yeah. Bill, we probably don't have this business. Hmm. It's actually a, um, a longer story. I'll keep relatively brief, but yeah. we were Go in as Bill's, long as you like. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> we were in Bill's mastermind group. Yeah, um, two thousand five, six, seven in that yeah. range. And my dad, when I, you had mentioned that I run this business with my dad, and yeah. he had another business at the time with, which he has since sold. Mm-hmm. But we had used interesting, unique 3D, what we now call 3D mail. We didn't yeah. call it that back then, but we now call it 3D mail. What were people calling it back then? Lumpy mail, dimensional Lumpy mail, mail okay. grabbers, inserts, um, which it. is still monikers we still use. But yeah. our brand is 3D mail. But, right, right. Um, we had, he, we, this was, I was still in high school when he was doing this. So but you, he, he, you in high school went to the Bill Glazer Mastermind. That's pretty advanced. No, I was fresh oh. out of college, but he had used okay. this same kind of stuff when I was going back to when I was in junior high, mm. high school. Yeah. And so we, you know, that business again, long story short, distribution business, big warehouse full of stuff, right? Yeah. Doesn't matter what they are, widgets, gidgets, sprockets, whatever <laughs> you want to call them. Um, right. So we went to one of Bill's mastermind groups thinking, hey, we can, we're using this stuff. People are asking about this kind of stuff. How do we, is it a business, is it, is it a viable business? Yeah. And we went to the mastermind group, which if you're not in a mastermind group, everyone should be, yeah, or yeah. at least have some kind of sounding board because we wouldn't be here if we didn't have this group. Right. And this group had seen our marketing over the years and said, well, we can bring this from China and we have domestic suppliers for this product and that product. Right. What do you guys think? Right. And at Bill's urging and the group's urging, uh, this was November of 2006-ish, I think. Right. Uh, by that spring, we were in business, a totally new business with 3D Mail. So mm. uh, it's funny you start with Bill because it's, it, I don't know if that was coincidence or not, but the whole thing started with Bill and his urging for us to get yeah. in this. So, what feedback were you getting in the room? What were people telling you? You know, it was pretty remarkable. We, like I said, the people there had kind of seen um, my dad, Keith's material. It's yeah. been in Dan Kennedy's newsletters. It was yeah. in Dan and Bill's teachings all, uh, for many, many years. Yeah. And we literally could have walked out. We could have walked out that day with orders of people who, mm. sight unseen, were ready to you know buy our stuff that yeah. we didn't even have products of yet. So, so what was, were they? What were they buying? Like, what was the? You know, I guess what were you proposing to them at the time? Yeah, so we had used things like little mini trash cans. Mm-hmm. We had used things like magic eight balls, and there's a little story behind the magic eight yeah. ball. But we'd use a magic eight ball, shake it up, and it tells your fortune. Right? Yeah, we, we had used those types of things. Yeah, um, fake money, real money, coins, little travel size sewing kits to get yeah. people to show up to live events. I mean, things like that, and right. so. They had all seen this stuff, yeah. and 
in the past is we were when we wanted to do a what we called back then a lumpy mail, which we now call a 3D mail campaign. Right. We would literally walk up and down aisles of toy stores or novelty stores mm. for inspiration. Yeah. All right. So uh, um, the Magic 8 Ball came from walking down the aisles of a toy store just up the road from here yeah. and saying, that's cool. How do we get 10,000 of them? <laughs> so, <laughs> what were you going to use them for? We actually used them. We were putting on an event. And this was I just started working for my dad. Yeah. So, yeah. Store. Go back up and talk about you working for your dad. You said it goes back. When did you start working for him? I got out of college in 2005, and that's mm-hmm. when I started working with him. Okay. So uh, on the pre-call, you and I were talking. I'd mentioned I'd been over at Washington State University, and yes. uh, I was going to school there. And what's interesting is that he, he, he loved my dad. He, would, he was in a position to pay for my college, so I, uh, that was fortunate enough for me. So I was in college, and as my last semester was approaching, we were deciding – Hey, do I want to come work with the family business? Right. Do I want to go out on my own? And the conversation pretty much stopped there. And he said, Travis, I know you've been in college. I know you have, you're getting a great marketing degree from a great university. Yeah. However, this is what's going to happen. I have what's <laughs> called, I have, I have this big box full of stuff from this guy named Dan Kennedy. Right. And I've got cassette tapes with his magnetic marketing Yeah, I remember those. Product on yeah, it. for sure. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so he actually said if you want to come work with me, again, great college, great university, I'm sure I'm sure I'm getting my money's worth. However, this is the marketing that works for us. This right. is what we call direct response marketing, lead yeah. generation, the three-step sequence which has now been drilled into me for, you know, 12 years. Um, right. But that's where it started. He said, great, great university, great college. Now here's the marketing I really want you to learn. And if this stuff right. rings a bell with you, then let's, let's talk in a few weeks. And, and uh, needless to say, it did. Yeah. So growing up, what did you want to be? You know, I always wanted to be in business somehow. You and your dad I, I, was running this business when you were young too? Yeah, so yeah. he yeah, so he took over the business. He let me back up. He became sales manager of the business in 1981 mm. and from 1981 to 1992 in lieu of paying him what the owner couldn't afford, he gave him ownership stake, gave him mm. equity. That's uh, awesome. Ni- yeah, 1992 came around, they were at 5149. Um after a couple of years of back and forth, can you buy me out? Can you buy me out? 1994 hits and my dad keys says Yes, now I can buy you out. Hmm. Uh, so that buyout process went for 18 to 24 months. I forget exactly which wow. now. Um, and then so we eventually took over the business. So I had grown up, if, if, if anyone here is familiar with Dan Kennedy's three-step magnetic marketing right. message, it's letter number one goes out, you yeah. wait a week. Letter two goes out, you wait a week. Letter three goes out, you wait a week. That's, that's magnetic marketing in a nutshell. 101. So magnetic marketing 101. It. You got it. And so... In order to earn money for, you know, to travel on traveling sports teams or gas money or movie money, I would literally stuff envelopes and seal them and yeah. stick postage stamps on them, and that that's how I earned money mm. uh, to do the things I wanted to do as a teenager. So, <laughs> I right. even though I didn't know Dan Kennedy, I'd been like doing Dan Kennedy stuff since I was about ten or eleven years old. I'd right. been immersed with the direct response, you mm-hmm. know, get a lead, convert a lead, move a lead, move a lead up the ladder my whole life without knowing it until I had, you know, gotten out of college and found marketing that works for small businesses. <laughs> right, right. So I know you have kids. When do you start them teaching them direct response marketing? <laughs> <laughs> Not quite yet. My oldest no. actually, my oldest turned six in just a couple of days. We're recording this in the very late January. His birthday's January. never too young, right, Travis? Like never. Well, no. and I will give him credit. <laughs> yeah. About the time he turned four years old, he came to me and said, actually he came to his mom, but he, the mom reported it back to me. He said, mom, I want to start earning some money. Okay. All right. Well, let's start making a list of the things you can do around the house to right. earn some money right. because you ain't just getting money <laughs> just right. for breathing. So, so uh, uh, you know, we, we talk about that kind of stuff. We've talked about he uh, – my wife did a garage sale to get rid of all these extra kids' clothes. That, now that we're done having mm-hmm, kids, we've mm-hmm. got a whole closet full of kids' clothes. Um, he set up a little lemonade stand. He made himself three or four bucks that day, you know, selling 25 cent, you know, per cup lemonade. So he's, I don't know if he's totally bit by it, but I know he does, he mm-hmm. loves his Legos. So I mm-hmm. do know that he really, you know, making an extra three or four bucks here and there is a big deal in his world right now. For so. sure. <laughs> so you start working with your dad and you're going from toy store to toy store? Yes. In fact, so yeah. 
one of the very first duties, same same thing we were doing with the Magic 8-Ball, we were doing a little puzzle piece mailer. And brief background on the puzzle piece mailer. What yeah. you do is if you want people to come to anything, you just want them to show up. It yeah. doesn't matter if you've got a restaurant. doesn't matter if you've got a retail store. It yeah. doesn't matter if you're doing a live event with speakers in a you know, three-day you know, boot camp type of deal. You, we want them to show up. So what we do is you mail out these puzzle pieces, and then at wherever the event is, again, whether it's your insurance agent, your, your restaurant, whatever, you have this puzzle set up. And what you have done is you have four or five pieces missing from this puzzle piece. Mm-hmm. If, their piece if their piece finishes that puzzle piece, you mm. know, is one of the fill in the blanks, they win a prize. Mm, okay. And, you know, we did... For this live event, it was worth it. So we did, you know, TVs before you could get, you know, a big TV for nothing, right? We did. Really? Uh, y- yeah. I mean, this so what was, was the event? This was a it was a retail success ex- expo. So we okay. wanted all of our, well, in, in a perfect world, we wanted all of our retail clients because that was that was who we served. We sold to small and medium sized independent retailers. So. Mm-hmm. Mom and dad, uh, mom and dad, mom and pa on Main mm. Street with a kite shop out at the coast. Yeah. You know, the independent sporting goods store, the independent uh, uh, pet store. That's who we. That's who we serviced. Yeah. Um, and we were putting on an event with speakers and vendors and the whole nine yards. Mm. Um, and we wanted them to come to this thing. And right. so one of the things that we did, one in, in order to encourage people who hadn't registered to come, we sent these puzzle pieces out. They registered. They brought their puzzle piece in. If it completed the puzzle, they got a. They got, you know, a prize. Mm-hmm. Plus, the people who had already signed up, just because people say they're going to come doesn't mean they're going to come. Right, right. So you need to have things in place to make sure they show up. And so uh, one of my very first duties was we got – this was, again, 2005-ish, right? So yeah. Google wasn't quite what it is now. But we, in, any, in any case, printed off a map with all the little pin needles of where the dollar stores are in, a, I think, a 25-mile radius. Right. And I had to go to each dollar store – until I found 25,000 puzzle pieces. Wow. And it didn't matter if that was 25,000 piece puzzles or, <laughs> or, wow. or uh, 2,500 hundred piece puzzles, whatever. <laughs> we had to get 25,000 puzzle pieces because that's what we were going to mail out to these people to get them to come to this event. Um, and that was my very first duty. So we, I had to go to, I think I ended up at three or four different dollar stores before we found the right size, the right combination of size and, you know, <laughs> price and you know so it took me it took me a better part of an afternoon but right. but that's how we were finding this stuff literally walking up and down aisles of toy stores and novelty oh. stores and um you know uh overstock you know it would be overstock type places so. right right so what were some of the outrageous prizes you guys offered at the time tvs what, did, what else what else uh worked yeah, we did so this was 2006 Six, yeah. fall of 2006 so we did tvs yeah we did i believe travel vouchers well i know we did travel vouchers i think we did mm-hmm. three and five day cruise travel vouchers mm, cruises okay uh, yeah we did and then we so that was some of the bigger price stuff if you will and then of course we had vendor related stuff so if a, a vendor would donate 200 dollars towards free whatever or a, yeah. you know uh we do we do a lot of uh for that business at the time and still do this business still does a lot of um customized imprinting on bags for for um for the retail store shops mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. um well that has a those typically have setup fees so we would you know we gave away setup fees for their bags i mean so really whatever the vendors whatever the vendors were willing to give and then we spiced it up with completely non-related stuff mm-hmm. like I said, tvs and trips and right you know i think uh, ipods or you know little the Little MP3 players were just now all the rage. Whether it was an right. iPod or not, I don't remember. Right. But they were, you know, like I said, dating I, I had ourselves. A, I, right. Yeah, I had a <laughs> yeah, right when I learned magnetic marketing. So, I, so uh, right after my dad told me he was sending me those tapes, I just told you about ten or fifteen minutes ago. I the next right. call was to hang up the phone, call mom at home, and say, "Hey, I've got a tape deck somewhere in my be- in my old bedroom. You got? Can you send that to me?" So <laughs> that's how I listen. That was my first exposure to direct response marketing. Was in a college dorm room. Well, I guess my apartment at the time on a old Sony Walkman tape deck. Yeah. Were you receptive to him saying that, or did you push back on that? Because I could see a new grad college is like. You know, I don't know. If, how are you listening to your dad and saying this is what really works? No, I, well, I mean, I 
like I said, I had I, I had known this. Kind Just of remember, I do interview him at some point. So I'm gonna ask him. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be like, "Oh God, he resisted me the whole way through." No, <laughs> no, actually, I, I said, "Yeah, sure, let's do it." I was okay. open to new things. I had seen the Kennedy stuff. I mean, I knew that he was doing different stuff to begin with. I, yeah. I mean, that it was, uh, you know, it, you know, about the time I was old enough to realize that, you know, I think I was ten or eleven at the time, give or take. Like, hey, so why don't we advertise on TV, Dad? That seems like a great place to see right, people. Right. Well. Well, this is why we don't advertise on TV, Travis. We're business to business. They don't – well, at the time they did maybe, – maybe now we should investigate it. Maybe we should be on some sort of HGTV channel or something. I don't know. But at the time there was only you know, the four or five network channels and you know, maybe 30 cable channels at the most. But, uh, right. but anyway, I, you know, he explained to me, well, that's the kind of advertising we do. And so we had, we had had conversations like that my whole childhood growing up. Yeah. Um, and, and quite frankly, I – you know, I, it was – he was successful, so I wasn't going to argue with right. success, even it though he was my own father. Exactly. Right. The I, proof I is in it works. Yeah. Exactly. I wasn't that young, dumb, and naive to right. think, okay, something else is paying the bills. No, Fair no, enough. It, it was this stuff. <laughs> so what did you do with the Magic 8-Balls? So that was a that same the same event. Most of oh, the, the same event. Okay. marketing we've done is for, the, for, these, for these events that we've done. Okay. Frankly, there's there's... Uh, to send out a Magic Eight Ball costs, I think at the time seven, eight, nine, ten bucks a piece. Mm -hmm. You need to have some back end volume to that. So right. selling a selling a selling a seat to a boot camp, and then all the back end that comes with those things. Yeah. You know, there's speaker sales, and then there's you know all the good stuff. Um, so what we had done is in 2004, before I had came to work with my father, he had an event, um, very very similar boot camp, big event, the whole nine yards, mm -hmm. eight or nine hundred people there. Two years later, we were having another one. And what we had found out is that, you know, this is a great thing about getting on the phone and actually talking to your clients every now and then. Right. Is the biggest thing we had uncovered without knowing it was, well, you just had one two years ago or whatever. the I think it was two years ago, 18 months, whatever the time frame was. That's too you soon? You had just had one. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh. these were – that's what we thought too. We thought, Again, we never would have thought of this because right. – it's been 18 months. What do you mean it's too soon? But <laughs> right. in their mind, it was too soon, mm -hmm. and there was the perception that there was the same lineup of speakers. I got you. Um, and in actuality, there wasn't. There was eight all-new speakers, thus the Magic 8-Ball. So mm -hmm. we had eight new speakers coming at the 20, 2006 Retail Success Expo, which I believe is what we called it now. Yeah. Um, and that was, the, that was the shtick, if you will. That was the mm -hmm. story behind the Magic 8-Ball, which... Mm -hmm. You know, as we talk about 3D mail, that's kind of the thing you got to kind of think about. And really just direct mail in general. You can't go out there with a ho-hum offer. Have a reason for getting in front of your clients. Have a, right. uh, you know, and, and preferably a creative, fun, make them chuckle, make them snicker, make them have a little bit of, you know. Like have said, some fun, fun with it. Don't exactly. be too serious. You got it. Yeah. Exactly. So – how did Bill Bill Glazer use? So I guess you come out of that. So you're selling to retailers, and then through the mastermind, then you start selling more to marketers who are using it for their customers. Yeah. So we yeah. sell to we sell to a couple different people. We yeah. sell to, uh, I guess you would call it the end user, the chiropractor who wants to get more patients, uh, the auto repair shop who needs to increase his car count, mm -hmm. uh, the coach or consultant who wants to put people into a coaching group or put them into a room or put them onto a teleseminar or a webinar. Yeah. Um, so we sell to those people. Then we also sell to what I would call, you know, core of influence type people. So other, other mail houses, right? Um, other coaches and consultants who are, you know, if they're doing done for you type stuff, they're doing the copywriting or they're doing mm, the marketing for right. the person, we sell it through them or they refer to us. Yeah. Um, you know, so, uh, those are really our two big, we got, we have the end user who is probably 80% of our business, you know, the actual business owner, coach, whomever, yeah. marketing director in some cases, but usually the business owner. And then about 20% of the time, it's other mail houses, other print shops, other coaches and consultants yeah. who are you know, encouraging or straight up telling them to use our stuff. <laughs> right, right. I mean, because I want to talk about this because there's several things here, right? It's not just the products, but there's copy involved and there's follow-up involved. And all three of those, you know, just the product is not going to make, you know, make the campaign. So could you talk about, I don't know which would be the best example. Out of those big direct response marketers who obviously know copy, um, can you walk us through what worked for them, whether it's Dan Kennedy or Bill Glazer or Frank Kern or Alex Mendozian? Who would be the best to, to talk about what they did and actually used 
the 3D mail results. Yeah. Well, so we, as you very likely know, and which is why we thought it was a shock that two years later there was an issue with too soon with our previous example of our right. own business. Dan Kennedy, Bill Glazier, when they were business partners and still now that, that Bill has sold out his stake, um, put on two big, massive annual user conferences, for yeah. lack of a better way to describe it. Right. One in the fall, one in the spring. Right. And one of the things that they're genius is at um, is to theme these events. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so they have a Wild West theme. They have a gold theme. They have a magic theme. And mm -hmm. you've, you know, you, any type of theme you can write. They have circus themes I've seen. And so they do this for a couple of different reasons. One, people are just kind of drawn to these themes. They like them. They like the idea of if they're going to go to a conference in Denver, there's going to be cowboy hats and boots. They like the idea mm -hmm. if the guest speaker is going to be um, Penn Jillette from Penn and Teller that there's you know magic eight balls and mm -hmm. you know rabbits coming out of the hats and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, that's all well and good, and that's they do that for that reason. The biggest reason they theme their stuff is because it makes writing the copy so much easier, mm. <laughs> right? It makes thinking of these creative things to send so much easier. So if you have a Western theme and you send, um, you know, a keychain with a pair of boots on them, you know, a pair of cowboy boots, or one year they sent, um, they actually sent real um, uh, bullets in the mail. I, maybe you, maybe you got that one, but a real. I'm not a gun guy, but a real big bullet that would be shoot out of something big. <laughs> right? So they they sent those, and so I guess the the, the answer what did to your they what did is, they put on it? Did they put yes. anything on the the bullet? Or, so the yeah. bullet was just your typical metal casing bullet. Okay. But what they did is they rolled up, they put it inside a mailing tube, mm -hmm. and then they created very very cool. They created a wanted poster, okay. and it had. A silhouette of the picture, you know, they, they didn't have pictures of all of us. I mean, if, if they did have pictures of all of us, they could have put our picture in there. But that, that's probably taking a little too far right. for 5,000, 10,000. Right, pictures. right. Individual you're, pictures. You're selling of one off, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but uh, so they created this wanted poster, you know, said wanted, Travis Lee, dead or alive, mm. preferably alive, um, to, <laughs> come to, the, uh, to come to the uh, – and I forget the year now. The year's inconsequential. Right. The, the 2012 um, uh, Great Western Super Conference being held in, you know, in the great mm. state of Texas or yeah. something like that. That's and they awesome. had this burnt, bur you know, made to look like burnt it edges. It looks like it authentic. Cutty. Exactly. And so they do that. So that was one example they did. One time they sent, just recently they sent, they had Penn Jillette of Penn and Teller, magic yeah. guy, right? Yeah. They, they sent a... Uh, a uh, Little pair of handcuffs, you know, escape from the boredom, escape from the everyday, mm. come here, learn how to do the magic trick. Right. And then they followed that up with a, with a uh, little abracadabra magic stick, you know, a little black and white thing that, you know, you're, you know you'd you see, uh, you know, cheap magicians use on the, on the street in Vegas or something, right? right so right. Uh, So I guess to answer your question is the ones that are doing it the best are typically finding some sort of shtick, right. finding some sort of thing that they can – Right. They can wrap their business around. So, <laughs> right. yeah. So, what would be a what? So, how do we take what what Dan does or what Bill does? Big, huge company they put on. How do we take that and maybe use it for? Oh, let's say the B two B sales guy, and he's got to mm -hmm. he's got to go out and get appointments and sell stuff. And I'm sitting here. I'm looking at our big color copy machine here that we have here in our back office right now. So, if I'm selling, I'm selling B two B, and I'm selling. Uh, big color copy machines to you know businesses doing five million dollars a year. Let's just pick a number out of the air. Yeah. Well, what's my what can I what can I tell these people? What can I do? Well, I can save them money possibly. So I can maybe send them a bank bag. So a real vinyl right. zipper bank bag. Uh, maybe I send them a little bag of shredded money if they're using outdated equipment to illustrate how their outdated equipment's actually costing them money versus getting investing in new equipment. Mm. All right. So that's one thing I could do. What else do I do? Well, I solve problems. I solve headaches. I relieve stress. Um, so maybe I could get a, a, a little pill bottle. And I'm talking when you go to your when you go to your uh, your pharmacist and you get that little red and reddish orangish pill right. bottle. With it's the authentic cap. pill bottle. Yeah, you got it. So I'm going to send this guy a pill bottle because I got the prescription for blank, whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. And so that's how you know that's kind of how we put a wrapper around it. We right. sit back and we think. What is our what's our main story yeah. here? What can what's the biggest upside to the recipient of this piece of mail? Right. And then how do we how do we visualize that or conceptualize yeah. that in a in a something that can go easily through the mail? Right. <laughs> That's kind of right. how we started. Right. 
Yeah, you think about what the big pain point is of the client, and and probably a lot of it deals around stress or money. And uh, like my wife used your your direct mail, uh, 3D mail, for, and used the stress cards. Um, yeah. And like got a huge return on that, actually. Um, so it's, you know, people open it. And that's the other thing. It actually sticks out from what all the other stuff that people are doing or receiving. No, you're exactly right. And that's, you know, the, it's the whole curiosity killed the cat thing. So if you can imagine something showing up with an envelope with something inside that's obviously not in traditional paper. Right. Um, for example, we've used little brains, and these are like little yeah. little toy brains. That you, yeah, yeah, little toy brains that you would use the for a children's. Brains, I think. Yeah, yeah, a little yeah. a little toy you, you'd use for a children's Halloween party, right? Yeah. And size of a half dollar silver dollar, something yeah. like that. And so, you know, you put something like that inside of an envelope. You put a boomerang because you want them back because you're going after lost pi- clients or patients, right? Yeah. We want you back. We haven't seen you in a while. Um, you know, the curiosity level of what's inside gets to them. And, yeah. you know, it's this isn't a direct mail only problem. It's a marketing and advertising problem. And that is just getting any right. message. Right. Open, read, heard, or listened to. Right. Doesn't it's, matter if it's. Yeah, it's like the ultimate headline, right? The headline, ex- you just get them to read it. Well, if you send them this amazing piece of direct response marketing and they never open it, then it's it's lost. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Um, and, and that goes broader with all kinds of marketing, too. I mm-hmm. mean, if they don't watch your TV ad, you can't sell. If they don't listen to your radio ad, you can't sell. If they don't read your billboard, they can't sell. If they don't open your direct mail, yeah. you can't sell. Why do you uh, think more people, Travis, don't use this? 3D mail could be any bulky mail, you know, sending a package to someone, sending one a year, you know, you know something from your site. What is the objections you get from people? So kind of in, in no particular order, lack of creativity, mm-hmm. just, you know, the whole slap your forehead and say, boy, I never thought of doing that, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Uh, so, you know, lack of creativity, lack of exposure to this kind of stuff. Um, I mean, once they not, do hear about it, they're like, "What? Do yeah. you get objections to why we, uh, people don't want to use it or don't think they should use it?" Yeah, we occasionally do. The next one would probably be, "Well, that's not professional enough." Dot dot dot. I I sell to fill in the blank. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Which, quite frankly, we find more or less to be bogus. I mean, yeah. there are there may be some places where I wouldn't send. A pill bottle, for example, to a certain group of, of of clients, or I may not send a bank bag, or I may not send a boomerang. But in more cases than not, that kind of yeah. stuff works really, really well. Yeah. Um, oftentimes, the cost is one, and that's not something to to just you know. I'm not here to. Uh, cost is real, and these things do cost more than traditional direct mail. Right. Um, however, what we find is that the response increase and thus the right. return increase warrant it. Right. Uh, it's why we always encourage people to test small to start right. off with. Right. Um, you know, now you don't need to test necessarily small if you've got a track record of similar stuff that works. So for example, you know, when we work with Dan and Bill and they're putting on a big event, yeah. they know to a certain degree because they've been doing it so long yeah. that if we send out X piece they at know the X response cost, rate. we yeah. can expect a reasonable we, we can expect something between A and B to happen, right? They've yeah. got they've done it that long. Were they, so they se- were they sending the us. the wanted posters to potential prospects who are going to come to the conference? So yes, so yeah, they okay. they this this went to people who were not yet registered for the conference. Okay. Now, I don't know the exact inner workings of how each mail piece goes out. Yeah. However, I can tell you that each mail piece that goes out to you doesn't necessarily go out to me, doesn't necessarily right. go out to the other guy, and you may get the wanted poster with the bullet. I may only get a postcard that's made to look like a wanted poster, mm-hmm. right? And they so the they have the different tracks for different prospects. Got. That's the big thing with direct mail. Yeah, so tell, talk about that, that, that strategy, because probably that's more sophisticated. Most people are probably just sending everything to, you know, to one, one group. Exactly, and it's, it's easier when it's your own client list, right? Yeah. So whether it's your people who have bought products A, B, C, and D, whether they've attended, you know, event A, B, C, D, whether they're just a, what I call a suspect on my list, so 
yeah, they got my free stuff but haven't done anything. Those people get marketed too differently. At least they should get marketed too differently. Right. Um, you know, so I'll give you an example from our business. Yeah. When you come in, when, when we do, we do big, broad, cast a wide net to get leads, right? And we do it all kinds of different ways. But then we get the lead to come in. They come request some lead magnet from us, from some mm. sort of freebie from us. So let's say, for example, the book, right? Yeah, I have the, I exactly. actually personally have the book. It's very valuable. Um, so I'll 3D mail results dot com backslash. I think it's book. Yep. If people want to check book. it out, yep, or forward slash book. Yeah. Dot com forward slash book. You got it. Yeah. Um, and so now. So what, what is the happens? book? Yeah. I mean, I guess go into that. But what's in the book? Oh, um, so the book's really cool. So we've got. Uh, it has your typical catalog information. So it has our 3D mail products and pricing and, you know, the stuff that you need to, you know, so you can make a decision, right, to based yeah. on, and do some budgeting. What's the most valuable portion of it, at least what my clients tell me, is that we also include headline ideas, right? right. Yeah. So I was rattling off those headlines, you know, eight new amazing speakers or we want you back for a boomerang or yeah. your, your, you know, your headache, you know, the, we'll, we'll cure your headache for dot, dot, dot. So we put a whole bunch of, we put the taglines, we put the headlines in there for you. And then we also include a CD that has a, a, about 30 different sample sales letters, completely copyright free, that C-O-P-Y R-I-G-H-T free, not the other kind right, of copyright right, we've yeah. been talking about. So they're copyright free. So they're letters that we wrote, we put copyright free stamps on them, and you can tweak them and edit them however you mm. want. Yeah, that's great. Um, you know, so that's it in a nutshell. And so. What are some of your favorite headlines? Of all time, well, it, yeah, it's a good question. My the short answer is my favorite headline is the one that works. Right, but <laughs> that's the obvious answer. It really depends because, and it's it's a similar question to what's your favorite direct, what's your favorite three D mail piece, and yeah. when I'm deciding, so first off, I let my the, the combination of whatever whatever the big pain point is we're we're solving yeah. that's going to be wrapped around my headline to begin with right. and then number 2 I'm going to work into it whatever 3D mail piece I'm sending yeah so the the uh, the great headlines so though that's how that's how I create the headline what's the pain point how do we bring it up right away in as few as words as possible now I'm not saying you can only have like I I'm, I'm not dogmatic like you can't only have a five word headline that's right, not right. it but how do we get to the pain point and or let them see the light, if you will, in yeah. as few words as possible, and then illustrate that with the piece. So that's kind of how I create the headline. How do I think of the piece, though, is the next question. Mm -hmm. And now that becomes a couple different things. What is, my, what is my value of a new client? So, for example, if I'm selling even a nice steak dinner, I probably can't send out pill bottles or trash cans or bank bags that are going to cost me five to seven bucks a piece. Mm -hmm. I can't make the ROI work on the front end for sure, and I may not ever make it work. However, if I'm selling, maybe now I, so let's use the same restaurant example. Maybe now I'm selling corporate catering in a business park setting. So there's, I'm in a business park in Seattle yeah. and there's 52 different businesses right around my shop. Yeah. And I want to get them to, I want to do their, their sales meetings and I want to do their, you Much know, their corporate ticket, events. Ticket yeah. item. So now I can probably make that bank bag work, sending it to those 52, those 52 HR directors in the business park around me, knowing that if I get one of these people to hire me once, I've probably made up that money I'm probably even on the front end, give or take the math, right? right. It depends on your price point. Um, but compared to a $50 steak dinner, you know, a, a $2,500 catering event or whatever the price point is, I can send out a lot of $5 bank bags. Right. Um, I can't send out a lot of $5 bank bags for a $50 steak dinner. Yeah. You know, so yeah. so that, that's kind of the, you know, the real basic right. 101 of how do I choose a piece? How do I choose a headline? I let, I let, kind of my lifetime value and my transaction value dictated. So I'll give you yeah. a great example of people who do very well with us. Yeah. Um, in, the, in the consumer world, we do very well with mortgage brokers. We do very well with real estate agents. Mm. We do very well with chiropractors, um, dentists. Be, all of those things have something in common that's either a high transaction value or a, or a reasonably high and long lifetime value in the right. case of a dentist or a chiropractor and those sure. types of things. Um, same in the B2B world, right? Um, is it trains, planes, and automobiles where he's selling, uh, where he's selling, uh, uh, um, shower curtain rods or shower curtain hooks? 
you're going to have to sell a lot of shower curtain right. rods, shower curtain hooks to to make 3D mail work for you if you're going to send out a piece that's five or ten or fifteen bucks. Yeah. Again, if I'm selling a lease on a new printer and the lease is worth five hundred dollars a month to yeah. me as the business owner, yeah, I can send out a lot of five dollar pieces before I can yeah. before I start losing money. So, what's a campaign that worked, let's say, for a dentist or one of those? Can you run us through one of those examples? That's yeah. that's really worked. So in the dentist world, now this works, I'll give you two. Yeah. First one works for a dentist. It works, I don't care what business you're in. Yeah. Actually, I take it back. I, I, was, I was stumped one time when I said, can anyone think of a business where a <laughs> lost client reactivation campaign won't work? Right. So briefly, lost client, lost patient, people did business with you. There's yeah. been a, a spe- set amount of time where they should have come back and do, done business with you, and now they're not. So right. dentist, a dentist is a perfect example of this. We have it built in, right? Six to 12 months, you go see your dentist. It's right. built in for us. Auto repair shop, you know, three to 5,000 miles or three to six months. It's built right. in for us. Right. Um, so it works for any business. So we send out these direct uh, – sorry, I lost my – so I was challenged to think of a bit the, – cha- That didn't give me a work. business that doesn't yeah. have a lost client problem. Um, and he said a cemetery or I, a mortuary. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, in, until we can conjure up yeah. that in a <laughs> you don't want to send a, a direct mail to like their spouse and say, "Are you exactly. dead yet?" or something like that. So yeah, that would not be good. So that one time he got me. So I now give credit where credit is due. Okay. Yes, if you're a so besides that, a cemetery. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. yes, a lost client campaign can work in just about any business because we, no matter how perfect we are with our business, we all have clients that slip through the they just slip through the cracks for right. whatever reason. Yeah, uh, they found a new breakfast diner if they're a breakfast goer. They found a new dentist they moved whatever right. well we can get some percentage of those people back with mm-hmm. a lost client or a yeah. lost patient campaign and what this one is, is we typically send out we send out a boomerang first okay. because we want you back the boomerangs i don't know why we've tested them against other pieces that we have is that we stock and we offer the boomerang consistently works better than all the other pieces mm-hmm. for the very first touch mm-hmm. Don't know why. Don't care why. We just know that and people it does, can so we use do it. the <laughs> copy. Like you have some some copy written campaigns. Do people typically use those with the boomerang, or do they write their own? Yep. So it's usually a combination of the both. Yeah. So we have some we have some letters uh, in that free book, 3dmailresults.com forward slash three book, or excuse me, forward slash book. Yeah. Start talking too fast. Um, and then we also have a suite of letters available. If anyone's interested, it's 3dmailsuccess.com. Yeah. And that's a, essentially a big swipe file for sales letters. Right. And we've got over 240 of them in there. Again, 3dmailsuccess.com. Um, and so in many cases, we may not be writing – well, in most cases, we're not writing the letter for them. But they're using our swipe file yeah, as, as, as inspiration. For which sure. Is, which is what they Much should do. Much easier than starting from scratch. Well, and nobody yeah. should – Nobody should be writing almost anything from scratch. I mean, even yeah. if you're, even if you're a brand new, pick your pick your business. Doesn't matter. Even if you're brand new, go look and see what other people in your industry are doing. Yeah. And like at the very least, find the cool stuff and find the ones people that are doing direct response. Yeah. And ethically, not not unethically, but ethically, be inspired by what they're doing. Right. You know. So if you're a dentist and you're get just getting started, um, you know. Go three towns over and look what the best dentist in in, in three towns over is doing. Right. Or, you know, uh, better yet, if you're a dentist, go look and see what a chiropractor is doing, or go see what a uh, typically really Different anything industry. other than a dentist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So you were saying so the the boomerang works first for some yep. reason. You've just yep. tested so we, it. Yeah. Yep. So we do. You typically send a boomerang. And then, then back up for one second. So yeah. do you recommend a certain? And it's probably different for different industries, but. Like, do you go to reactivate? Okay, it's been six months since they left, been in a year, two years. Is there a sweet spot that you found that that works better? Let's say with a dentist office or something like that. Yeah, it it really is industry to industry. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, we talked about auto repair shops and dentists. Those have, I mean, they're just built in, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what you want to do, and this this because think about it. If I'm, uh, you know, to use some of the examples we used, if if I'm a lunchtime diner, well, and you come in every week. Well, you're lost the second week you don't come in, right? right? If you come in every Wednesday at nine p at nine a.m. for breakfast, and it's Wednesday at nine o five, where are you? Yeah, you're <laughs> lost, right? So I mean, that's right. give them a that's call. Like, that's like, like one extreme yeah. version. 
Yeah. The other extreme version is the is the mortgage broker who I think it's the average person re, and I don't know the, the there's going to be mortgage brokers on listening now yelling the right number at me but it's somewhere between every 6 to tw- 6 to 10 years you either refinance or buy a new home right, something right. Like that. right well so that's a big drastic difference yeah. between one week for the diner yeah. and 6 to 10 years for the mortgage broker so just look at the typical frequency of your customer you and, yeah. got it. Okay. that's it so I look at the frequency and say you know, if I'm the dentist in week, in week, not week, in month seven, they're lost because they mm. should have come by month six, month right. seven, they're lost. Let's do something to get them back. Yeah. So the boomerangs first. And then yeah, boomerangs first. Mm-hmm. Then we typically do some sort of non 3D mail thing, maybe a postcard with a picture of the boomerang and a kangaroo and an aborigine or something on there, right? <laughs> so it's, it's kind of just we, uh, we, we play the whole theme we talked right. about at the very beginning, but we want this person to think, when doctor whomever is sending this stuff, we like are identified by that stuff. So it's 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 branding, but branding as a happy bri- byproduct of the direct response right. that we're doing. Yeah, you're almost telling a story with your exactly. direct response, yeah. And then maybe we drip in an email in between those two pieces. And then maybe we send out a little compass because, hey, you've lost your way to doctor so-and-so's office and, right. you know, we haven't seen you. And then we maybe, you know, and... And what we'll typically do is we'll keep adding steps. You know, we typically don't want to go any more than, say, six to eight weeks out on any campaign. So if you're mailing every two weeks, you probably got about a three or four step sequence in uh-huh. which you can live in. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you do steps one and steps two, you're leaving tab- money on the table if you don't do a step three. Right. Right. Um, if you do a step one and you don't do a step two, again, and step one was good, you're leaving money on the table by not doing a step two and a step three. Right. Um, you know, so that was the great one. And then you, so the other one I told you that works really good for dentists um, is, and this again, this anybody who has a brick and mortar or local business, you need to be looking at new movers into your area. Mm-hmm. So these are lists. My business can get them for you, but we're not like unique in this regard. Anybody can get a list of people who have moved that meet your demographic and geographic needs. Mm. So let's say. Uh, boy, we've used dentist a lot. Let's use yeah. something else. Let's use a, um, <laughs> let's use a use chiropractor. There we go. Let's use a chiropractor. Yeah. So now we can get a list of people. Um, now I would get, we could get a list of people between the ages of 55 and 75 who moved into a certain geographic area and make X amount of, and have a household income. Household income may not be as valuable for these people because many of them may be retired, so their income may be zilch, nada, but their net worth is very, very high. So maybe we use net worth instead of income in this mm-hmm, case mm-hmm. Um, because we want to – what we're looking for essentially is an affluent man who throws his back out playing golf, and now we want him to come in and get fixed. That's essentially – you know, that's if we right. were to build an avatar, that's who we would want. Right. So we can get a list of new movers into an area, um, and then – what we typically do is we typically go back in that 30 to 90 day um, move in. So if they moved in February 1, we're not necessarily going to mail them the month of February. They got all kinds of stuff going on. They still got boxes to empty. The garage is still full of stuff. Right. You know, they, you know, they, they're still trying to get their mother-in-law the right address. Um, <laughs> or not. Yeah, yeah or not. Notice. Yeah, exactly. Um, so in that, it, it's in that kind of 31 to 90 day window is when we'll start – sending them direct mail pieces. Mm-hmm. Um, and what's great about it is you can really define your... That's what's great about direct mail is that you can define your person via a mailing list way more targeted than you could ever do it f- with TV or radio or, 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 or even Google AdWords, right? I mean, there's mm-hmm. just... We just know so much more about them on a mailing list that if you can get a good mailing and that we could do I mean we could do a three day class on mailing lists, but the long and the short right. of it is if you can define who your person is and really narrow them down, you can go get that list and then so so now we can get that list on a grand scale, or we can just get that list of the people who moved in Q one twenty fifteen, for example, right? Mm-hmm. So um, that's something that we can do. And it's, it's, and, and to take that mailing list thing a step farther, if you don't know who your exact avatar is, you, if you don't know, we can actually do a thing called regression analysis, mm-hmm. which is where you give us, in the case of this chiropractor, give us your patient list. 
will run a whole bunch of statistical analysis against it and say your person, you know, you know, give us your list of your A clients, and you got fifteen hundred of them. Your best clients fall in this bell curve in age, and this bell curve mm. in income, and this bell curve in in, in post secondary education. How close they are to you, and they yeah. yeah, and they read these books, and they donate to these kinds of causes. Hmm. Well, once you know all those data points, you can go plug those exact same things into a mailing list search engine, yeah. and get that exact same person. Yeah. Um, you know, so the mailing list is powerful. There's there's a reason radio and TV are called broadcast. You broadly right. cast your message. <laughs> your Direct dad would roll over. Different. Yeah, exactly. Direct yeah. mail is the complete opposite. So okay, so you get the mailing list. You formulate your your perfect avatar, right? And then, so what do you where do you start with the three D mail? So again, it would kind of depend on the business a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the chiropractic uh, following Yeah, that, so yeah. for the chiropractor, first off, I'm probably again, I'm probably not going to use things like a bank bag or a or a pill bottle that's going to cost me three, four, five bucks a piece right off the gate. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm probably going to use less expensive things. So we have little magnifying glasses, um, little toy ones. I mean, they they work, but you could never burn an ant with them, right? So I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got these little toy magnifying glasses. Right. Maybe you send that out. It's attached to the upper right hand letter of the of the uh, of the right hand. So let's let's use a new mover example. So attach the attach the little magnifying glass to the upper right hand letter, upper right hand corner of the letter. Headlines read something along the lines of, "When was the last time you look a, took a good hard look at your health?" Dot right. dot dot. Dear Betty, um, I see that you're new to the neighborhood, and you know you may or may not know this, but a lot of Crestwood Valley residents use Doctor Doctor uh, Doctor Grin or who I don't even know. We're kind of making this up as I go. But. Right? No, it's good. I like it. Keep going. <laughs> you know, yeah, a lot of people in, in the it's Crestwood good. Forest Valley yeah. use Doctor use Doctor White's uh, as a as a great source to actually get themselves healthy and vibrant again. And as a new member to the neighborhood, we want you to come in for a thirty nine dollar. Back thing, and then we'll. But then, in right. addition to that, we'll give you a, a free massage with our licensed massage practitioner, who's right next door here. And oh, by the way, you got to do this by X date. Right. That right. would be a very basic, very, very easy to implement new mover campaign that you could put 3D mail with. Mm-hmm. Love and it. And now, yeah. so now you're using. So now you use the less expensive stuff to get them in the door. Now that's yeah. not to say that, like you know, it's necessarily I'm like trying to be cheap, no. but. Generally speaking, less expensive stuff to get them in the door. Now what? So that's kind of always the, the next thing is, yeah. you know, Dan Kennedy and Bill Glazier always teach you've got to make an irresistible offer right, right to get right. somebody in the door. Yeah. Well, the irresistible offer is only as good as what you do after they take advantage of that irresistible offer. Because, you know, in my example there, the, the, right. the chiropractor is not making any money on a $39 office visit. He's just not. So you either need to have systems in place, in, in his case, in the office to convert right, them, right. right? Have a great, have a great sales process, a great, you know, the whole nine yards, and or preferably and a great marketing sequence to follow up with them yeah. to convert them to a to now a to convert them from a looky loo who came in essentially for the great deal. How do we convert them now into into this case a long term patient? Who then hopefully refers other people. Yeah. So that's that's yeah. how you have to think about this stuff. It's all yeah. great on the front end, but what do you do right. once you get them? That's the next step. That's right. that's the next thing you got to consider. So yeah, I love that, Travis. I like the copy off the top of your head. That's good. Um, <laughs> so what do you recommend as far as follow up for that new person? Do you recommend just sending out one to the new movers and then only people respond? Do you recommend doing a follow up um, for that that person who's never been to you? Yeah, that's a good question. I it's it's a similar answer to my lost client example where I said if you sent one and it worked for you, yeah. you're leaving money on the table to not send two. So you see the Same response. Way. Yeah, so I let Now that's not to say cuz this happens, it happens to the very best of them. That's not to say, "Okay, you sent out one piece of direct mail, it didn't work like we wanted it to. Let's right. throw our hands up in the air and let's not do this anymore. Right. The whole idea is to test these things. Right. Um, you know, so like that's like I said, test small to begin with. Yeah. Uh, I was talking to a client just the other day. He said, I've got a 5,000 person mailing list I want to mail to. And I said, well, why do we have to mail to all 5,000? And he said, because well, I didn't, d- didn't dawn on me that we didn't have to mail to all <laughs> 5,000. 
okay, so let's look at it this way. We either have five different tests of a thousand. Right. We have 50, 50 different tests of a hundred. Um, he was selling a, I mean, this was a guy, uh, basically business loans to biz, the other business owners. So, okay. I mean, this is a five figure, five figure really big transaction for him. Yeah. Right. So there's, let's not worry about sending 5,000 pieces one time and a postcard. Right. We're, that's you want who's going to buy a ten thousand dollar thing? Upper, exactly. yeah. Like a silver, you have a silver platter option, or one of those you type of things. It. Yeah, you got it. So let's now look at this instead of a list of five thousand. Let's look at it as fifty tests of a hundred. Um, mm. If my math is right, I think that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you <laughs> so, got it. <laughs> I can do. I can do. I can do. Uh, ROI math and, uh, and I can do business math, like as, as Dan right. Kennedy likes to say. But uh, but anyway, so yeah. I let my I let my results dictate to a certain degree. Now, if you know, I've got a guy. I don't know why I didn't think of him when we did the new mover campaign. He he owns a um, a vitamin shop and and uh, and a um, healthy food store in in a little tiny town in Central Oregon. Cool. The okay. first time he did it, what did he send? The first time he did it, he did a. Um, a little one page letter in like a six by nine envelope, basically yeah. inviting them into the into the store and the restaurant. They have a um, half the store is vitamins and minerals and that kind of stuff. The other half is you know uh, fresh organic food, sandwiches, sandwich cool. shop, yeah. you know smoothies, that kind of stuff. Sounds good. And yeah. it did okay. Well, so then the next time we amped it up a little bit. We actually used one of our express mail envelopes, which yeah. you can see at the website. Yeah. Basically, it's made to look like a FedEx, but it ain't a FedEx. Looks very website. official. Exactly. Yeah. So we upped the ante with that. Just dolled up the letter a little bit, put that in. Oh, okay, we got a few more responses. Okay, this is working good. What was he offering? Do you remember? So he offers a couple of different things. It was a, um, I think it was, it's gone through a couple iterations now. I think it yeah. was, um, twenty dollars off any fifty dollar purchase. Okay. So forty percent off, I guess, right? I yeah. think is what it was, or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, and not or and a free small smoothie because he wanted wow. them to get he wanted to off he wanted them to get them in for the restaurant side of things yeah. and for the retail store yeah. side of things. Yeah, got it. Um, so then that did better when we put it in the big express envelope and added a little more to the letter. And well, did he get a list? Did, like, wh- how did he get the list? Did you help yeah, him? Yeah, great question. Yeah. Yep, we helped him do that. Yeah. We were able to get that list for him. And what we did is we just found um, in the, again, the exact numbers aren't significant. We went to like the four or five surrounding zip codes. Right. Again, he's a very small town and he's in uh, Grants Pass, Oregon. So, I mean, yeah. the whole city is one zip code. Right. And then there's four or five zip codes. So, if you're People you're may York, travel for like 30 miles to get to the yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're yeah. in New York City, you're thinking, who yeah. the heck like is going to travel the next 30 block. miles? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, it's all relative, right? Sure. So, if you're you know, if you're San Francisco or New York City or yeah. L.A., you know, shrink it. But, right. you know, so he's got five surrounding zip codes. It makes up the whole county, yeah. essentially. Um, so we found those people, we did it based on, they had moved out of the area. So this is another thing you can do if you get a lot, a new mover letter. Mm -hmm. We didn't want the people who had just moved in and around the five zip codes because in theory, they already know about us and they're not new to the area. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you moved, you know, from one side of the block to the other, you're not necessarily a new mover. We wanted them to move from outside the area. Right. Um, and then we put an income income flag on it i think they had to be making over 40 or 50k Mm -hmm. um which in his neck of the woods is a lot i mean the average you know the average income in his area is probably 25 30 grand a year if you're Mm -hmm. if they're lucky so i mean we're so we were going to the top 60 70 80 percent in his area right um because he's not cheap um nor does he want to be right any health food is usually not the cheapest option yeah exactly Exactly. Uh, and I think that was about it. They had to move outside of the area. They had to meet a certain income requirement. Uh, and that was it. Yeah. And so we run this about every six months for them. Again, there's just not a lot of people that move in. Right. And so we get 300 to 500 people twice a year. Wow. Give or That's a lot. It is. You'd be, yeah, it is. It is. I mean, it's, it's a decent size count. I mean, so that really is only 1,000, 600 to 1,000 people a year. Yeah, but for one mailing to get 500 people, that's yep. it's pretty good. Yep. Yeah, and so this last iteration that we did is we – actually, the last two now, uh, the one we did last fall and the one we did now at the beginning of this year, yeah, we plus it a little bit. So he actually has a really cool – it's an, it's basically an eight-page testimonial booklet of all those, you know, like his 22 best 
customers telling right. them how great his stuff is. Right. So that was an eight page full color, eight and a half by 11 brochure, wow. you know, folded down. That went in there. We sent them a menu of the food. We sent them a cover letter. We sent them, and then we sent them an actual little coupon, right? A little, uh, you know, picture eight and a half by 11, printed three up, cut in half, right? Mm-hmm, and then, so mm-hmm. we sent them that whole package. The whole package probably cost them about three and a half to four bucks a that's piece. That's it. Um, wow. Yep. Well, that's, that's not it. that you, much. Compared you say that's yeah. it. You'd be surprised with some three and a half bucks a piece. You got to be kidding me. But, <laughs> but I mean, for that's a lot of stuff for three yes, and a half dollars. It, it so. was. It was. Um, we used pre-sort standard mail, um, so we got the postage rate way, way down. Which, by the way, if you're, you know, if you're doing any amount of direct mail and you're on this call, talk to a mail house, whether it's us or somebody else. Um, they'll know things that you just don't know because you're not in the industry about how to get postage rates lower and you know you're thinking of doing this maybe it's better to do this i mean you do done for you but some people order it and just send it themselves you're saying yeah oh yeah in fact most of our clients do that they really yeah they i'm surprised yeah so there's a a lot of work yeah it is i mean it's it's uh like I said, though, growing up, I I stuffed and mailed envelopes growing up. That's what you did. <laughs> so, I mean, to, to hammer out 500 envelopes while you're watching a two-and-a-half-hour movie on TV, you know, f- you know, Saturday afternoon or something, no big yeah. deal, right? So, yeah. so, so, to me, it's, you know, I personally don't do it anymore, yeah, but like, like, but... Let me give you an example. So, like, mine, I love mine, by the way. You guys did it. Um, you know, you the X-ray film, and there's like some multiple pieces in here that you'd have to just throw in here. You know, there's the actual X-ray, mm-hmm. and then the actual like prescription thing. So it's not like so. I don't know. It's time consuming, I think. But maybe it is. Not. I we um, you know, it really <laughs> like a lot of things in marketing. Uh, if you have more time than money, uh, then it's probably better off to yeah. do it yourself. If you have, you know. I don't know if anybody has more money than time, but if it's the other way around, right. you know, if, I'm all for paying for speed if I can. Yeah. If I can. Yeah. Um, What's been the most popular? So I want to talk about the most successful, most you know, campaign that you found, and then also the least successful. And so what we wish, what you know, what we should learn from that. Um, you know, if we had all day, what I would do, make you do, Travis, is I'd go through every single one of your products and have <laughs> you tell me what what was success, which campaign was successful, because you have. Some cool stuff like the bank bag, the message mm-hmm. in the bottle, the trash can. You have the shredded money, the pill bottle. Mm-hmm. I want to use the. I mean, I just want to use it just to see what happens. Like, I actually want to use the treasure chest at some point. You know, just seeing yeah. this gives me ideas. So, what? Talk about what's one of the most successful campaigns someone's run um, with your yeah. service. So. Boy, I hate the first one that comes to mind. I hate mm-hmm. to go back to it again. Is a dentist using mm-hmm. a lost patient campaign? Okay, so what did you do? Yeah, they sent. So this one's a little unique. Okay. in that they weren't lost patients. That's they okay. They were. They yeah. were people who had come. They had come from an. They had come for a fact of findings appointment, or didn't show up to their fact of findings appointment, mm-hmm. and ultimately didn't buy. Yeah. So that's really your two tracks. They came, okay. got the examination. The doctor gave them. The results gave them the prescription. Yeah. They didn't buy it, yeah. right? Or they were supposed to come to the appointment, didn't show up. Now what do we do? Yeah. And so they do this every quarter. But the best one they've ever had, and they've done yeah. probably a half a dozen different ones that I of, of my things. Right. But these little worry dolls, and you can see them on the website. They're yeah, yeah. these little tiny dolls. They're maybe an inch tall. Yes. Maybe they a look like of a an voodoo doll, thick. sort of. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. You're, and so, so, uh, but they're actually made in Guatemala. We, we, I buy them from an importer who buy. I wow. mean, is literally going down there every year to buy. I have no idea how many she buys. We buy oh tens gosh. of thousands, so I can only imagine. That's how crazy. Many she's buying. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. And so, and what's cool about this, so they sent out these worry dolls. You know, dear Betty, I'm worried about you. Mm. Uh, you know, you were supposed to have an, you know, you had an appointment with, um, uh, what's his name? Dr. I'll, I'll think of it. We'll you know, Dr. Second, Smith. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Dr. Smith. I was going to try to give you his real name, <laughs> but uh, we'll it'll call come up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, you were supposed to have an, you had an appointment with Dr. Smith on August 5th about your fill in the blank. Yeah. And, you know, for whatever reason, you didn't go through, you didn't go through and have the procedure. Yeah. Well, in order to keep a perfect smile and a happy mouth and yada, 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 you should come in and have this done. And right. um, so they sent out and it, 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 it's on my blog. If you go to the website and look at worry dolls, you'll see it there. Yeah. 
and I'll get I won't get the numbers exactly right. They sent they sent out something along the lines of 600 or so of these pieces. Wow. Okay. Um, so they went back 18 months. Yeah. So about so every quarter they do this and they go back the previous 18 months. Got it. So every quarter new bloods coming in and new bloods going out. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> sent out 600 ish pieces. Yeah. About a total cost of two thousand dollars total. So yeah. buck what about buck eighty five, buck fifty, buck seventy five a piece. They got. And I won't get the numbers exactly right, but I, they got something along the lines of 24 or 22 of those people to show back up, mm-hmm. book appointments, go through the procedure that was prescribed to them. They did over $100,000 over the next wow. over that next quarter based on the people who got that yeah. mailing piece. Yeah, because the lifetime uh, value of someone who comes back is not just that next visit, but they may come back on their treatment plan or whatever the case is. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's a great uh, one. So that's a great one. We have an auto repair shop who's done, yeah, you know, the lost client stuff. Well, he did a lost client one, and and that's if there's anybody hesitant about using 3D mail at all, I would say, hey, get a hundred boomerangs, find a hundred people that have a lost, seen you. and yeah. send it to them, and just see what you get. That's yeah. what I suggest people do. But yeah. he did one there. Let me think if I can. I've got my notes here. So yeah, go I ahead. Find one of. Yeah. Maybe more of a colder one that we did. Yeah, did, we'll do did, a warm one than a cold one. Yeah. See if I can find. Yeah, it. as you're doing that, I'm just gonna look at the site, and you know, you one thing that I saw, which was cool, is you actually have kind of built in like three step lost customer campaigns. So you have like the compass, the boomerang, and the worry dial, um, and so there's kind of built in campaigns within the the products. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, I encourage people to check that out just for if you know if you're not gonna just for ideas. Um, I mean, you send socks out. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's hilarious. Um, but anyways. Uh, so here's that one I was looking for. Yeah, so we ahead. have a guy. He's actually a manufacturer's rep okay. for um, lighting company. Okay. So he's not employed. I mean, so he does all of his own marketing. I mean, he's just a rep. It's, he doesn't, does, you know, he does get some support from the home office. But essentially, he's on his own to do his own marketing. Yeah. And so what he does is he goes around, and this is kind of tying everything we've talked about together. So it's a good example. Yeah. He goes and he uh, – so these are people. He wants to put in new high-end LED lights and replace old incandescent or halogen lights essentially, yeah. right? So I need that you, guy. Yeah. yeah so I need that picture, guy. Yeah. So, so he's targeting a couple different, couple different yeah. kinds of businesses. First off, just big spaces. So if you've got a big warehouse that right. you need to keep lit, great example. That they're 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 very good for him. Another great example is somebody who's you know a, a Sherry's or Denny's that's open twenty four hours a day and the lights never go off. Right. Thus, the savings are multiplied versus the guy who's in his you know versus the dentist who may only be there ten hours a day. Sure. but Denny's is open twenty four. They yeah. always got to have the lights on. Yeah. And so what he does is he finds he finds specific groups of businesses that he wants to target. Yeah, he so knows he may his only exact target. avatar, essentially. You got it. Yeah. So he may only target, and he does this with the yellow pages. He does it just with some Google search. He yeah. just goes and finds, okay, I want to find 50 or 100 banks to target this month, or yeah. I want to target 50 or 100 restaurants, or yeah. I want to target 50 or 100 warehouse owners. And all he's doing is he's, he's got, we wrote a, le- a three-step letter for him. He knows that all three steps are going to cost him to a list to a list of 100 for him to get all three steps out the door it's mm-hmm. going to cost him about 700 bucks mm-hmm. give or take mm-hmm. so 7 bucks per head per all three steps mm-hmm. he knows that he's going to get three or four appointments out of that he knows that he's going to get one or two closed business out of that and now it just becomes a math game yeah. right i spent $700 if i get two mm-hmm. or three appointments if i get one if i get one of them what's my is, is that a positive roi yeah. for me if i get two of them is that a positive roi right. you know so it's just what's it's it worth what's a typical customer worth to that to that business boy i don't know off the top okay. of my head the transaction for him it's worth several thousand dollars to yeah. him and yeah. then as far as you know so it's well worth it if he yeah. spent 700 dollars and he converts one person or two people it could mean you know three yeah, to six thousand dollars or something he, you're exactly yeah. right and so um and so, and and his whole play is it's a great play. Is they also then loan you the money to buy the to get the new lights, right? Well, the loan amount starting in month one is less than what you were paying. Is great is less than the difference than in your power savings. Right. So you are literally cash it's a no brainer. Yeah, you're cash positive the your second month. You're I'm surprised it doesn't convert positive. more. 
you'd be surprised. You'd be yeah. surprised at how many business owners put blinders on. And yeah. You know, but uh, but he's following up with the phone calls with a lot of them too. And yeah. uh, he's at a, a Kansas City or St. Louis. I forget. He's somewhere mm-hmm. in Missouri. So mm-hmm. anyway, manufacture Titan Titan LED is the is the is the are the lights he represents. Yeah, Again, that's he doesn't great. work for them. But yeah, yeah. So what about least that's been least successful? Maybe talk about some big mistakes you see people making. Yeah, even if you try and tell them not to do it. The biggest thing that yeah. we see. Um, a couple different things. First yeah. off, the, the biggest thing is if, if you're going to use 3D mail, not obviously and intentionally connecting the dots of why they got the thing that you sent. Mm-hmm. All right? So if I'm going to send you a boomerang, right. again, because we've harped on the boomerang, so everyone's the top of every. If I'm going to send you a yeah. boomerang, I can't just say, Dear Tom, it's Dr. Smith. You haven't been in for an appointment. <laughs> Call us. I see. Oh, you've got to say, as you can see, doctor. As you can see, Doctor Smith. I'm. Do- as you can see, Doctor Smith has included a boomerang into this letter. Why right. has he done this? Well, it's because you last. We last saw you on March first, and just like this boomerang, we'd love to have you come back into our office because mm-hmm. we love to see your smiling face. Yada yeah. yada. yada. Tired <clears> in. So that's okay. the biggest number one mistake I see okay. is not tying the thing, not not connecting the dots for them. Yeah. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just got to connect the dots right right and then the the biggest mistake and this goes for 3d mail or direct mail yeah is not giving enough thought about your mailing list that is the number one thing that people have to come away with if they get anything out of this call if you're going to do direct mail of any kind you've got to do a lot of thinking about your mailing list who's going to supply it for me what's available out there yeah um if you think I ask people, who's your ideal client? Well, anybody that can drive to my office between 35 and 55. Uh, no, that's not a mailing list. That's like the white pages. Right? <laughs> so, um, you know, think about who you are. Think about who that person is. Yeah. Um, that's, that's the second mistake is not thinking, about the, uh, not thinking about the list, giving it enough thought, not connecting yeah. the dots for your client. Um, <clears throat> and then number three was just on the tip of my tongue. I guess... Um, underestimating what kind of effort it takes to actually test and measure and test and measure and tweak and tw- test and and um you know the people who do the best in direct mail very rarely come out of the box swinging for the fences and getting a home run yeah they did something there was strikeouts they and foul balls off it. the foot and hits into double plays i mean to steal yeah. baseball uh yeah. analogies they tested and tweaked and tested and tweaked. Now, you can have success right off the bat, but just yeah. don't expect, you know, don't expect because I've got I've got a bank bag mailer going out, I put 10 minutes of thought into my mailing list, I'm going to this thing's going to do right. me a million dollars. It's yeah. just not the case. It just like anything, it's going to take yeah. some time. It's, you know, you, you can't set up a Google AdWords pay-per-click account in right. 10 minutes. So it's Travis, talk can. about that, you know, cuz I know we have a few minutes left. And since it's inspired insider, I always like to ask for you, what was that foul ball off your toe uh, that didn't work? And then on the flip side, I want to hear about what was one of, one of the proudest campaigns that you ran, person like Boy, with f- yeah. Mm-hmm. Boy, a foul ball. So I had worked. This was client work. Now I had worked mm-hmm. with a client, a financial planner out back east, and um, he had done your traditional kind of boring. You know, financial planner stuffy letters, right? That's what he had done for many, many years. And they did okay for him. And he came to me and hired me to write him a more, what I would, more Bill Glazier esque, Mm -hmm. outrageous advertising. Yeah. Yeah. And so we used little bags of shredded money. Um, We put them in a clear envelope and we used handwritten let you know we use handwritten googles all our google handwritten doodles all over it and mm-hmm. got away from the stuffy talk and you know put his picture with him and his family in there and talked about um <clears throat> this was with um when the gay and lesbian and doma laws were all changing last year that's who we were targeting mm-hmm. um and we thought we had this thing great we had testimonials from a handful of people in their community sounding good so far. It, yeah, it was pulling I out thought, all the stops. Yeah, yeah, I thought we, I thought we had it, and I don't want to say it bombed, but it did not do well. <laughs> and his old stuffy, Makes traditional, 
we've been in business for five billion years and we talking all about them and he beat it and why do you think that is that's crazy i don't know i think there was a little seasonality to it um Hmm. i I mean it was it wasn't like i wrote this we created this project for this client and i had to like get him to do it kicking and screaming it was like wow this, this is, is cool. exactly what we wanted yeah. this was this is exactly what we think is going to work turning things on its head and trying it, something new exactly yeah. and and now we're back to doing boring stodgy <laughs> and it just works and i wish i knew why because i'd yeah. tell them I'd, I'd say let's get rid of the stuff that doesn't work and just do the stuff that does work right uh, now that's it, it did okay for him but it could it we basically yeah. came down to can we beat the control yeah and we didn't uh and that was frustrating because everyone I mean, the people that I bounce copy ideas off of thought it was great. My dad, a couple people in an inner circle yeah. that I keep with, um, the client who had done, they're not marketers, but they had done their research and knew what they wanted. And, right. they, you know, we really thought that was going to work. And, right. boy, <laughs> it just didn't work. And so that the, the, I guess the value of that test story is test it. Yeah. Um, and even the even if you think you've got, like, the greatest thing ever. Right. Y- you still you still may speak. end up stumped, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it sucks. But guess what? It happens to everybody. Babe right. Ruth struck out. Right. You know, my childhood hero Ken Griffey Jr. struck out. Yeah, we're gonna strike out. <laughs> so on the flip side, mm-hmm. one of the big home runs. One of the big home runs. Which one? Said I got my list here. Let me look at that real quick. Yeah. Um. Uh, let's see yeah. here. You know the the Kennedy ones are always good for us. There's I a National you, Enquirer one. I don't know if that's one of the. Yeah, home that runs. one was just oh, that one was good. That okay. was one we did in house. It okay. was for our own use. Um, I try to give things to people that I don't that aren't my business because sure. it's the whole. Of course, you can do it. You're in that business. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. So I go with the home uh, run. That's not. Yeah. So let's see here. Let's. This one was good for us. This was one of our very first clients ever when we got into this direct mail piece and it wasn't even 3d mail okay but it was a window washer so i mean like is i i at the time yeah. one guy excuse me one owner two other guys one truck like this was i mean this is you know as, as far as being a, a contractor it's about as small as you could get right and he needed he wanted an infuse infusion of cash for the holidays yeah so we created a three-step um, buy your wife the. It's, it was a lot better than this. As I listened to it in my head, basically buy your wife the gift of of clean windows all year round for Christmas. Okay. And so we, what we basically did is we sent them a letter to his. I don't even remember what it was. Three or four hundred clients who had previously been in. Yeah, these things cost nothing. Sixty five, seventy cents a piece to send out. So he's yeah. like two hundred dollars all in for this mailing. Right. And we essentially sold subscription-based window cleaning. Mm. You sign up for the whole year. We'll bill, you sign up for four window cleanings for the whole year. We'll come once every quarter. The first, you know, we, we'll pre-schedule them, but we bill you every month. And what's great is not only are we going to give you four cleanings, we're going to do it for the price of three. Mm. So we're going to give you three, four cleanings for the whole year. Yeah. We're going to bill you every month, and then we're only going to bill you for the, for the, first, for the first three of them. Um, and that did extremely, extremely well. He got about a dozen people to sign up for this thing out of a little tiny list. I mean, response rate was probably 8 or 12%, something like that. Yeah. Um, got his infusion of cash. Got people. Some people paid all the whole year up front, which was fine with him because then yeah. he got that cash infusion at the yeah. end, of, end of November. And we did it for a couple of reasons. One, it was one of our first clients, and we really wanted to see that, you know, well, let's do this. Let's see if we can test this and do this. Right. Number two... He was adamant that there is no way anyone would sh- would pay for what is mounted to subscription window cleaning, right? And it worked. Yeah. And then we, then we've since put in all different kinds of contractors into that similar model: yeah. a roofer doing roof maintenance at a at a at a subscription model, yeah. essentially. Very smart. Uh, photographer doing subscription model photography. Yeah. Uh, that's a good one because it just proved that. You don't need a big list, and Even you don't need the, to yeah. be like the biggest. You don't need to be the six hundred pound gorilla in your industry. Yeah, uh, to do something unique and different, and have your clients rave about it. Yeah, yeah, love that one, Travis. Travis, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. The interview would not be complete without a call to action. 
So people should definitely check out, you know, we're talking about direct response here, right? So mm -hmm. 3dmailresults.com, uh, 3dmailresults.com backslash or forward slash book. Uh, yep. I actually have the book and I encourage anyone to go on the site just for get your creative juices flowing. Check it out. Any other places we should point people towards, Travis? You know, the book is your best place. If okay. you want to if you want to see the stuff in action, I'll let a little bit out of the bag. Um, we talked about follow up. You're yeah. going to get this stuff in the mail. Yeah. So if you see request what, the yeah. book, you'll see it in action. So right. Right. Um, in that regard, we put our money where our mouth is. So if you yeah. wanna if you wanna a lot of good inspiration, a lot of good ideas, yeah. and see it in action, get the yeah. book and you'll you'll get the book about three or four days after yeah. you request it. About a week later, you'll get another direct mail piece. About two weeks after that, you'll get another direct mail piece. So uh, yeah. uh, keep your eyes and ears open. Yeah, I use your stuff. My wife uses your stuff. It works. People open it. People will bring it back in and say they love it, and it's fun. And so I encourage people to check it out. So awesome. thanks, Travis, so much. Thank really you so appreciate much. it. It's been great. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the park, came out better on the other side See lights like a beach if you find the sand right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand